Hello there, my name is Matthew Collier and this is my app Campana which was created to allow bell ringers to search and practice different methods. I'm going to be going through each one of these tests, though not necessarily in order. Um, so first up we have the search screen where you can see any of the 23,000 methods. Uh, you can see they're coloured by their stages, which is the number of bells they have. You can search via the search bar um, and you can and if you put garbage in, you get a no methods found ever. You can also use different filters. You can sample via their different classifications, for like this, all the jump methods. Uh, you can do different combinations of them, as well as searching via stage, uh, collection, classification, lead head code, favorite, and custom, though I don't have any of those yet. Next up, the method info screen, which allows you to see all the information about a specific method. Uh, for example, here we can see that's the place notation that allows me to actually generate the method, the different calls, classification, lead head code, uh, as well as the length, the collections it's in, and the performances, the performance data. For example, with a different method, like a jump method, you can see that it comes up with the type as jump. So it's all accurate information from the database. Uh, as for viewing a method, you can press on the view button and you can see the line for the method with the different bells highlighted. You can look at the work for a specific bell. For example, the text on the right describes the path that this bell takes. For example, it's dodging 3-4 down here, then it's making thirds and hunting down, leading 0. seconds, all of that stuff, and you can change the bell there. You can also see the grid view, which just shows a single lead end, and as well as being able to see all the calls. And for methods that don't have calls, such as St. Thomas Surprise Minor, you can see that the compositions aren't available and there's no option to be able to see the calls. The automated test for the view section takes about three hours as it goes through the view, the full of the blue line and the practice mode, so I'll add a sped up version of that at the end of the video. Next we're going to look at the full of the blue line mode, so I'm going to do this for playing Bob Doubles, and you can choose which bell you're planning to follow, so I'll follow the two so you can press the left centre or the right side of the screen to show where my bell, the blue one, is going next. And whenever I make an error, you can see that it flashes up the line for the next section and the errors counted in the top left. Uh, and at the end of this, when I finish going through the path of this, you can see it gives me my score, how many errors I've got, and my time. Now when I hit different bell, you can see that it's got my high score, uh, and that saves between goes. And now I'm going to show you that for a splice method or a method with calls that also works correctly uh, and you can see the calls come up on the right hand of side of the screen. Also note that when I make errors you can't see that the haptic feedback happens but I get a debug log in the console and it does work on mobile. Next we're going to try the striking mode, so we're going to do this for uh, play bob doubles again, let's practice, you can see we've got the different visualizers, we've got the sallies, we've got the circle, the blue line mode here where the blue line will appear, and the striking information. So if I press play without me playing, you can see the bells going, and the different visualizers working as expected, as well as the blue line slowly being revealed at the bottom. Striking information doesn't have any information cut really because I'm not ringing. But if I start ringing as the two, you can see I have to press at the right time for it to go. It's not going to be a second's place, third's place, fourth place, fifth place. And you can see it coming up here with how close I am. So if I'm too late, or if I mess up, really random times and get a few errors and it will tell me how far out I am and all that information. And also the pause buttons work here at the bottom to allow me to pause or carry on. I also need to show that for um, compositions like in-out make the bob uh, you'll be able to hear voice lines which will come at the end of the lead end so I'll skip to that. Oh as you heard up there, the call is made at the right time. Next we're going to try making a new method. So we're going to add a method here, call it test. We'll have a stage of, say, 
8. So first you can see that if we put an invalid number in, for example, if I were outside of the range, if an error, if I just put random garbage, you also give me an error. If I put some random place notation in to just do a random method, I have no idea what it's going to look like. You can see it generates us our method there, as long as with the work and the grid that all works as expected still. I press done, I can see it in the list here, test little alliance major. I can still use all the different modes with it, and I can go up here and press delete to delete it. I can also add jump notation, for example, going 3, 6 will allow me to, okay, comma, 3, 6 will allow me to have a jump from the 3 to the 6. Next up we're going to try compositions, if we just go into a random method here, choose a composition, add a new composition, we're going to do lead end, so if we just do a bob, then a single, then a bob, then three planes, and then a single, and a splice to Ipswich surprise minor. Then have a look at that, and as you can see, it's got the calls on the right hand side, and then it splices to a different method, like that, and you can see the work for the bells, updates, as you'd expect, if for example they're lying at the end because there's been a call, cool, the actual calls on the left there. And for the other type of composition, you've got uh, call place compositions. So we could have uh, in out make the bob for this, uh, for example, and then when the observation bell comes in, there should be a call. Cool. There it is coming in. Uh, in and then out, so when the observation bell comes out, there we go, and uh, the stuff that I've got for changing the observation bell and adding the number of rounds all works fine. I can also add uh, random compositions, for example if I wanted 72% bobs, 73% chance of a call per lead end, and add a couple of possible methods to splice to, and then have 20 lead ends. Uh, then we can see that here and it will just generate it randomly and it will be different each time. Okay, now to look at the options screen, we have a few different options. We have the option to turn on and off haptic feedback, which I can't really show you working because I'm not on mobile, but if I make an error in here, you can see I don't get a console log. Whereas with it on, uh, I do, and it also does that just to show that it's now on. And I don't have I get haptic log feedback there. Uh, for high contrast mode, that makes every single screen high contrast, and you can see it updates everything as you'd expect. Uh, this is all done procedurally, and it's uh, I think it looks rather nice. You've got all the different modes, all updating correctly, uh, and then the hang stroke gap. That makes it so at the end of each uh, row, there isn't a gap. So you can see there, there wasn't a gap, and normally there would be. Uh, and then the gap between rings, you can change this to be way smaller, so now if I go into practice, it's way faster. Uh, and also, I have the option to reset all settings back to factory defaults. Just like that. And also, uh, there's a reset database button, however, that doesn't work on uh, Windows, that only works on mobile. Next, we're going to show that liking methods work. So, by default, playable doubles is liked. However, if I unlike it and then reset the list, you see it's gone. And if I just like some more random methods or like it from inside, then they will update here and I'll be at the top. And if I leave the app and then go back in, you can see that persists. If I go into the app with a different resolution, for example one for a tablet, you can see all the UI updates as you'd expect. It all, it's all centered correctly and nothing is obscured or hard to see. Okay, next we're going to show uh, edge cases for go, going with the stages of two, for example. And you see all the formatting is correct for those. Uh, and uh, even on a smaller aspect ratio, for example iPhone, Uh, all still works for the stage of 2, but and for stage of 20, uh, it's also formatted correctly. Everything is just a bit closer together. And you can see all the lines in the background are in the right place. The Sally's in the circle are all distributed as you'd expect. 
Okay, next for exporting methods, you can go into view for any method, press the download button, and for example, if we exported it with three lead ends per column, press export. Now, if we go into this folder here, you can see it's exported our method as an image, and that works on mobile too, and you can uh, easily print it or share it. And final thing, this isn't something that was one of my tests, but I added a bit later. There's a help section where you can see the uh, help on any of the screens. So yeah, that, that's everything. That's all my tests done. Um, thank you very much for watching.